Existing in the middle of the lush and prosperous Sundanese area, which is rich of various culture. and natural magnificence. Becoming milestone in educating the nation. Building persons to be society servants and nation founders. Universitas Pajajaran or UNPAD was born due to the initiation of West Java leaders and government support to establish a higher education institution with various disciplines. Launched by President Sukarno on September 11, 1957, today UNPAD has a large number of institutional achievements. Such as status improvement as the incorporated higher education with A accreditation. This achievement is in line with the commitment of all policy makers in order to accomplish the vision and mission of UNPAD to be excellent university in conducting a world-class education that is able to support the nation's competitiveness through a quality learning process and innovative research. The representative learning facilities and strategic campus in the center of Bandung City, Bandung Regency, and Higher Education Zone in Jatinangor, Sumedang make UNPAD as an excellent university in conducting education, research, and community services. Through its best programs enabling to fulfill the needs of society, nowadays UNPAD has 16 faculties and one postgraduate school, totally consisting of 152 study programs. Faculty of Law Faculty of Economics and Business Faculty of Medicine Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science Faculty of Agriculture Faculty of Dentistry Faculty of Social and Political Sciences Faculty of Arts Faculty of Psychology Faculty of Animal Husbandry Faculty of Communication Faculty of Uh, okay, I think uh, there's some technical difficulties. So we will begin this event. Good afternoon, fellow lecturers, researchers, and students. My name is Dr. Gemma Gempita. I'm the staff of Dental Material Science and Technology, Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran. I'm also a member of the Unit of Internalization, Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran. Uh, in this today, I will be acting as the master of ceremony on this event. 
before we start, I want to apologize for the rain, rain sound. I think that it can be quite disturbing for all of you. It is my pleasure to be part of this collaborative event between Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, and Akayama University, Japan. On behalf of the Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you, especially to the Dean of Facu Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Dudi Aripin, and also uh, to our honorable speaker, Professor Junisia Saomi, and all the guests from Okayama University. We appreciate all of you for taking the time of your busy schedule to join us today for the online lecture about the role of MRI in the imaging diagnosis in squamous cell carcinoma model. We hope we will learn a lot today. To officially begin this program, we are pleased to have Dr. Dudi Aripin, the Dean, the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, to deliver the opening remarks. Dr. Dudi Aripin, please welcome. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Gema. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Dear colleague and, uh, colleagues and students, thank you very much for uh, gathering here in the visiting lecture session organized by International Unit Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, in collaboration with International Unit of Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Nursing and Faculty of Pharmacy. We are fortunate to be joined here today by Professor Junichi Asaumi from Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology, Graduate School of Medicine, Dentistry and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Okayama University, Japan. He is also the president of Japanese Society of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology. Professor Junichi Asaumi will deliver a keynote lecture entitled The Role of MRI in the Imaging Diagnosis of Squamous Cell Carcinoma Model. The attendees of this event include both of undergraduates and postgraduates, allied health professional student and lecturer. I would like to extend my gratitude to Prof. Junichi Asaumi for your kind attention, sharing your valuable knowledge with us today. Hopefully, this is the beginning of strong partnership between our institution. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rudy Aripin, for such a wonderful speech. Before we start the lecture, I would like to remind all of you to kindly mute this audio. This lecture will be held for 30 minutes, followed by discussion session for 15 minutes. If you have any questions, you could ask question on the chat box on the Zoom, or you could uh, type the questions on the YouTube if you are currently on the YouTube. Or you could use the raise hand feature with the discussion uh, with the, when the discussion began. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we, may we begin the lecture by Professor Asaumi, which will be moderated by Dr. Lucy Absalawati. Dr. Lucy is an oral and maxillofacial radiologist, and also she has been teaching in radiology department, Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, for this past 15 years. Dr. Lucy, please welcome. Thank you, Dr. Gemma. Thank you, Dr. Gemma. Selamat sore semuanya, saya ucapkan kepada semua hadirin. Good afternoon, Professor Yudhisya Saumi. My name is Lucy. I will be your moderator today. Before we start the lecture, let me introduce our lecture. Name is Professor Yudhisya Saumi, DDS, and Med Asaya. He is the Dean of Dental School, Okayama University. His expert field of humor biology. Uh, 
there uh, is so many publication that you made, Professor Asalmi. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Professor, I cannot mention it in one by one. Uh, then without being in polite, let's start our lecture today. Uh, Professor Asalmi uh, will be present with the title, The Role of MRI in the Imaging Diagnosis in Squamous Cell Carcinoma Models. To Professor Yunichi Asaomi, the time is for you. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for kind uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy to have uh, this opportunity to make my presentation here. Now, uh, our postgraduate students from Jordan, Palestine, and Tunisia are joining this meeting. And Dr. Uh, Shunsuke Okada, our assistant professor, also joined for my help in English. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I share my slide, OK? Okay. Uh, today, I will show you the role of MRI in the, the imaging diagnosis in squamous cell carcinoma model. I talk about the basic protocols and the basic features of MRI. So the purpose of this lecture is the understanding the basic protocols of MRI and then the understanding of various analyses of MRI in the oral and maxillofacial region. I show you the essential MR images as follows to obtain better MR images, basic imaging protocol, diffusion weighted image, and dynamic MRI. I explain uh, the important issue to obtain better MR images. Uh, this is uh, this is a, a scuba cell carcinoma case in the left side tongue margin. Panoramic radiograph demonstrates the patient has many metal restorations in the mouth. Ultrasonography shows the region has many proliferation of blood vessels. CT shows severe metal artifact. Uh, but MRI doesn't have any artifact. CT is often influenced by intraoral metal uh, metals. So isn't it MRI affected by metals? This is uh, another squamous cell carcinoma case in the left tongue margin. Intraoral findings demonstrate the patient has some metal restorations in the mouth. This time, CT shows relatively uh, clear images. Yeah, tumor here and the coronary image. Because the CT images are taken under the open mouth condition to be unaffected by metals. On the other hand, MRI include moderate uh, metal artifact. And thus, metal artifact of MRI develops due to the metal category. Basically, non-precious metals are more influential than precious metals. 
the effect of metal differs depending on the positional relationship between the imaging plane and the metals and the type of metals. The severity on the metal artifact is different by imaging procedure and the sequences. Metal artifacts differ depending on the cross section to be cut out. It is impossible to avoid, avoid completely the metal artifacts. Motion artifacts include various factors such as body motion, mandibular position, instability, tongue movement, swallowing, etc. Skill to fit the situation in the imaging operator is also needed. For example, adequate explanation and instruction for patients. Shortening time for imaging by modification of imaging method, conditions, and so on. Next, I demonstrate the basic imaging protocol. This slide shows the basic imaging protocol we obtain essentially in the squamous cell carcinoma case. We firstly obtain the axial or transverse T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image or STIR. A short time inversion recovery. Then we get coronal or sagittal T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image or STR image. Contrast enhanced MRI are taken after first dynamic MRI taking. Next, we get uh, diffusion weighted image and uh, edema. Uh, finally, we get dynamic MRI images and uh, contrast enhanced T1 weighted images. Qualitative diagnosis follows shape or existence diagnosis. We can confirm the extent of the region by the shape or existence diagnosis. We can judge the differential diagnosis or the effect of treatment by speculating of histopathological findings in the quantitative uh, qualitative diagnosis. We use uh, plain images uh, such as T1 weighted image, and T2 weighted image or STR image for shape diagnosis. It is sometimes possible to make qualitative diagnosis in case of disease with specific signal intensities of the brain images. Uh, for example, uh, lipoma. Uh, lipoma shows high signal intensity, uh, hyper intensity, uh, white image on both T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image. STIR shows almost same image as T2 weighted image. It is usually used with fat saturation. Fat and water uh, show hyper intensity, high signal intensity, uh, white image on STIR. It has possible advantage in the demonstration of the uh, <coughs> diseases. Uh, fat also shows hyper intensity on T1 weighted image. T1 weighted image is useful for understanding anatomical structure. 
On contrast against the T1 with the image with fat saturation, fat is suppressed so that contrast against the fat may become a hyper intensity. This slide shows the typical signal intensity of tumor under each imaging condition. Tumor shows here is intensity to the muscle. Uh, muscle shows intermediate signal intensity, gray image on T1 weighted image. Uh, hyper and uh, marked uh, hyper intensity on T2 weighted image or STR image. And uh, it shows hyper intensity on contrast enhanced T1 weighted image. Important reminder as the confirmation of the extent area of the region is to make a careful comparison among each sequence. We try to find different signal intensity area compared with adjacent normal tissue. Tumor. T1 with the image, uh, <coughs> gray image, uh, white uh, image on uh, STIR, and the contrast enhance image uh, enhancement area here. Uh, this is uh, left upper gingival carcinoma case. CT demonstrates clearly the absorption of the bottom line of left maxillary sinus. Tumor area is well enhanced on contrast enhanced image, SCT. But uh, maxillary sinus area, yeah, is not enhanced on contrast enhanced CT. MRI shows uh, ISO intensity on T1 weighted image, slight high intensity on T2 weighted image, and enhancement on contrast enhanced T1 weighted image. But maxillary sinus area yeah, <laughs> is not enhanced on contrast enhanced T1 weighted image as well as contrast enhanced CT. So we can understand that the gingival region here is tumor, uh, tumorous region, but the region in the maxillary sinus is suspected to be mucosal thickening, hypertrophy, not tumor. A T1 with the image and T2 with the image, oral carcinoma can often depict either using combination of some sequences to understand the extent of tumor progress uh, accurately, it is necessary to compare some sequences and to ascertain the difference of the signal intensity with the surrounding tissue that is adjacent to the tumor. Diffusion weighted image is uh, the method that imaging of speed and direction of diffusion of the water molecule in the tissue are created. The extent of diffusion can be quantitated as an apparent diffusion coefficient ADC value. Diffusion image weighted image is useful for uh, quantitative diagnosis. It is easy to receive uh, the influence of magnetic susceptibility artifact in the oral region. Uh, this is uh, left up a gingival carcinoma case. STR shows hyper intensity, white image. ADC map is 
the quantitative estimation imaging that displays ADC value of each voxel calculated from diffusion weighted image with different uh, more than two kind of B value. This time will be B value equals zero second per millimeter square and 800 second. And this is a report from European radiology. Case one, upper side image uh, contrast enhanced P1 weighted image, lower side images are uh, diffusion weighted image, ADC value uh, 0 0.8 in the pretreatment, 1.27 at the early treatment image, and uh, 0 0.96 at the post treatment image. In the post treatment, the patient had histopathologically proven local failure. Case two. Uh, upper side images are uh, contrast enhanced uh, P1 weighted image. Lower side images are uh, diffusion weighted image. ADC value uh, 1.08 in the pre treatment, 1.74 at the early treatment image, and 1.86. In the post treatment image. Post treatment, the patient has local control for four years after treatment. In conclusion, this paper said that uh, single ADC measurement pre or intra treatment did not predict response, but ADC post treatment was a marker for regional failure. Here change in ADC was an even stronger marker when using an early or late treatment decreases in ADC to identify local regional failure. Our next paper is from International Journal Radiation Oncology, Biology and Physics. Left side is local control case, hypopharyngeal cancer stage T3. The ADC value of the primary region was 0.76. Right side is failure case, oral cavity can, uh, cancer stage four. The ADC value of the primary region was 0.94. And this paper said that pretreatment ADC along with T stage is a potential predictor for local failure in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma treated with chemoradiotherapy or radiotherapy. They propose that patient with high pretreatment ADC should be treated with more intensive regimen, especially for patients with stage T3 or T4 diseases. Diffusion weighted image, pathological consideration within the region is possible without enhancement. Images are often deteriorated in the oral region. Quantitative evaluation using ADC value may be relatively possible if it is the same equipment, same imaging procedure, and the same parameters. ADC value depends on the equipment and imaging conditions. Dynamic MRI is the technique for observing the time-dependent enhancement within the region by imaging repeatedly the same slice, including the region with rapid intravenous injection after starting imaging. It is useful for quantitative diagnosis as well as existence diagnosis. 
I illustrate here MRI protocol in Okayama University. Uh, first, T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, STR image, are taken, actual image, and the coronal or sighted image are taken. Then, diffusion weighted image and the ADC map are taken. Next, dynamic images are taken. Transverse contrast enhanced T1 weighted images are taken at 360 seconds. Second dynamic images are taken at 600 seconds. Then, coronal round or uh, sidal contrast enhanced T1 weighted image uh, is taken. Third dynamic images are taken at uh, 720 seconds to 1000 seconds. Dynamic MRI was acquired uh, using three dimensional first imaging with steady state precession sequence using the following parameters. The first series of dynamic contrast enhanced MRI was composed of 21 consecutive uh, performed at one second interval. The acquisition time for each scan was 14 seconds. The second and third series of dynamic contrast enhanced MRI are acquired at approximately uh, 600 to 800 seconds and uh, 900 to 1,200 seconds after the administration of contrast medium, respectively. Two consecutive scans were performed for second and third series of dynamic MRI resulting in the uh, total scan time of 30 seconds. The region of interest was drawn manually so that it included the region in which the diameter of tumor was greatest and avoided the, the vessel and the cystic part of the tumor. The main signal intensity in the region of interest was calculated for each region using warp station. The contrast index was calculated using uh, the uh, formula uh, contrast index uh, equal uh, signal intensity post contrast minus signal intensity pre contrast per signal intensity uh, pre contrast. The time course of the contrast index was then plotted to obtain a contrast index curve. Application of dynamic MRI is used uh, as follows. Differential diagnosis, time signal intensity curve, improvement of demonstration ability, early phase of contrast enhanced image. Dynamic contrast enhanced MRI is useful for detection of small region. Information uh, Supplement at biopsy, dynamic contrast enhanced MRI can show breeding possibility, location for biopsy, prognostic prediction, and treatment evaluation. I show you case of improvement of demonstration ability using early phase of contrast enhanced image. And this is uh, left tongue margin carcinoma 
ultrasonography shows uh, 17.7 millimeter diameter and uh, 5.4 millimeter thickness of tumor and uh, internal blood flows. Lymph node increases its short diameter, but its hilum is clear and no deviation. The blood flow is uh, a cue. A hilar pattern doesn't show uh, apparent uh, internal degeneration. And this is a uh, left tongue margin. Oh, sorry. Yeah, SAR image. T1 weighted image and the contrast enhanced T1 weighted image. And diffusion weighted image and the ADC map. These images cannot show clearly the region. Uh, but early phase dynamic MRI is uh, zero second, 15 second, 30 second, 45, 60, uh, 75 second. Early phase dynamic MRI shows small region uh, as a relatively obvious image. This slide shows the same region on STIR, T1 weighted image, and the contrast enhanced T1 weighted image, dynamic MRI at 0 second, 15 second, 30 second. So dynamic MRI at 30 second can show the region most clearly. And this is a uh, left tongue margin superficial tumor. She has uh, two, uh, two tumor formation, uh, back and forth. Seeing hyperechoic area is recognized in the uh, submucosa between the two tumor formation. Anterior tumor shows 10 millimeter diameter and 3 millimeter uh, thickness. And the posterior tumor shows 6.6 uh, .6 millimeter diameter and 1.6 millimeter thickness. Uh, slide shows the region on the STR and T1 with the image and the contrast enhanced image, transverse image, and the coronal image. It is difficult to confirm the region on the gene sequence. This slide shows the anterior tumor. Dynamic MRI can demonstrate the small region. Dynamic MRI uh, image at 30 second here, tumor, and uh, ultrasonography image. This slide shows a posterior tumor here. Yeah. Dynamic image at uh, 30 second. Tumor is in here. And uh, posterior uh, ultrasonography, uh, uh, anterior and posterior tumor. Dynamic MRI can supply the additional information at biopsy. For example, breeding possibility or possible location uh, for biopsy. Panoramic radiograph uh, shows the region include radio lucency and radio opacity. Yeah. Bone condition CT also shows that the region include uh, radio lucency area and uh, radio opacity area more clearly. 
3D CT shows the expansion of the region. MRI shows hyper intensity uh, gray image, including no intensity black image, area on T1 wet T image, coronal image, and uh, coronal image and axial image. Hyper intensity, including uh, no intensity area on the STR image. No intensity area on the STR corresponding to that area of, uh, on T1 wet T image. Contrast enhanced image, T1 with the image shows well enhancement area for the region in area corresponding to the uh, hyper intensity T1 with the image and the hyper intensity on STR image enhancement area uh, on contrast enhanced T1 with the image. Dynamically, MRI demonstrate a peak at 105 seconds in its uh, contrast index curve. Uh, this is a report of in this region. The report said that occupying benign tumor is first choice. Osteosarcoma vascular region is also possible region because the region showed extreme uh, enhancement. Biopsy should be carried out from slight distant, uh, distant lower of the distal root of first molar. Thus, dynamic MRI can supply the additional information at biopsy. For example, breeding possibility or possible location for biopsy. Dynamic MRI can provide the prognostic projection and treatment evaluation. Tumor is in the right tongue margin. Ultrasonography shows 17.6 uh, millimeter diameter and 10.7 uh, millimeter thickness uh, depth with uh, certain inference uh, proliferation of blood vessels. Mr. Kang! <laughs> Contrast enhanced CT uh, shows enhancement. Yeah, uh, transverse image and coronal image. STR shows hyper intensity, white image, uh, coronal image. Contrast enhanced. T1 with the image shows uh, enhancement area. Yeah. Dynamic MRI demonstrates a peak at 45 to 60 seconds and then plateau to 300 seconds. The signal intensity level is relatively high. Arterial injection chemotherapy from superficial uh, temporal artery uh, carried out. Tumor became uh, flat condition after arterial injection chemotherapy. MRI after arterial injection chemotherapy cannot detect uh, the region. Dynamic MRI also decreases the enhancement level, yeah, high and low. Compartmental modeling analysis is an analytic method using the compartment model for analyzing kinestically the drug uh, disposition 
in the body after the administration and uh, it's possible to analyze uh, quantitatively. And this paper is uh, evaluating the response after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, radiochemotherapy, and so on in the oral cancer. This setup of the quantitative parameter that reflect blood permeability and extra vascular uh, per extra cellular space is possible. This paper also said that the map of each parameter is made and used for the prognostic projection and the treatment evaluation. Uh, dynamic MRI, the contrast agent administration is necessary. Contraindication according to the renal function, uh, usual dynamic image is able to address in the most models. The measurement and analysis are also easy. The demonstration of the small region might be possible by using the early stage of contrast enhanced, uh, enhanced image. The comparison between facilities is difficult as well as the ADC values. Uh, I have explained each MRI sequence using the scan cell carcinoma case. The purpose of this lecture was understanding the basic protocols of MRI and then the, the understanding the various analysis of MRI in the, the oral and maxillofacial facial region. I would like to introduce the Asian Academy of Oral and Maxillary Facial Radiology and Oral Radiology. We didn't have organization of Asian Congress of Oral and Maxillary Facial Radiology. Then Asian Academy of Oral and Maxillary Facial Radiology was established in 2013 by Professor Keiji Tanimoto Hiroshima University as a Secretary General. Asian Acad Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology is an organization for oral and maxillofacial radiologists in Asia. It is established for Asian oral and maxillofacial radiologists to make them advanced and hold Asian Congress of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology uh, for them. Asian Congress of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology is held in every alternative year of International Congress of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology. This slide shows the, the uh, funded uh, officers, uh, Sergio Stan. Uh, Bandung, uh, he uh, was uh, the president of 10th uh, Aconfa at that time. Current officers, Aconfa president, uh, Aconfa president elect, uh, immediate former uh, Aconfa president, secretary general, Treasurer, Secretary to Board of Directors, Journal Editors, and uh, IADMFR related officers. Current Regional Directors, uh, Hendra Hori uh, and Isti uh, Indo from Indonesia. Asian Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology uh, have to go to next step. We will advance the below items. Reconsideration of constitution, certifying committee, annual fee for 
AOM FR, change of full members requirement uh, from IADM FR membership to payment of AOM FR annual fee. AOM FR certifying uh, committee aims to establish AOM FR certified oral radiologist. The committee will make the standard contents of oral radiology and finally make an examination and training system. We have two official journals, oral radiology and imaging science dentistry in Asian Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology. The first issue of oral radiology was published in 1985 under the edition editorship professor Hajime Fushiata of o Osaka University. Professor Kanji Kisho of Okayama University became the editor in chief in uh, uh, <coughs> 1992. Uh, professor Keiji Tanimoto of Hiroshima University succeeded to the position in 2002. Uh, Professor Tanimoto contributed to the development of oral radiology for 30 years. Uh, Asami succeeded uh, him uh, in 2016. I hope that oral radiology will uh, further develop and publish breakthrough in the field as a truly international journal of high quality. All editors in chief gathered in 18th uh, International Congress of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology in Hiroshima in 2011. Uh, first editor, uh, Fuchihata, uh, second PC, uh, third, Tanimoto, and me. Oral radiology accepted by Medline in November 2018. This means that oral radiology has joined the rank of top journals. In 2020, oral radiology had over 500 submissions and 71 published papers. A new award for the best published article was established by the Asian Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology by the, the effort of Miss Keo Seoul University. We are always looking forward to submitting your articles. Next Asian Congress will be held in Gifu, Japan at July 20th and uh, July 2nd to uh, July 5th, 2022nd. Gifu is here in the center of Japan. Those who are interested in the oral and maxillofacial radiology and want to have friends in this field, please contact the, uh, to the office and join us. You are most welcome. The information will be delivered through email and the homepage. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, lecture, Professor. Uh, it is very useful for us. Uh, so I open the uh, question session, maybe. Uh, before the uh, question session, maybe I can include conclusion the presentation that you has uh, presented uh, right now. Uh, I conclude that uh, using MRI to look the lesion. Uh, especially soft tissue lesion 
we can a little bit more accurate. We so we can separate which one the lesion and which one not the lesion. Uh, uh, differences of the, the intensity. Uh, so uh, with the MRI, we can we can choose the change of the intensity. We can determine it, the diagnosis, uh, deeper diagnosis, more accurate and more easy to measure and to analyze. So I open the question. Uh, the audience, maybe there's something I want to ask to professor. Hmm. Um, maybe professor, uh, I would like to ask something. Mm. Um, professor, in uh, is it sound? My 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 uh, my sound is a uh, here for here. You can hear my. You can hear my sound, professor. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, thank you, thank okay. you. Okay, uh, maybe uh. Um, uh, there's a question. Um, maybe I want to ask you something, Professor. In MRI, if you look the soft tissue with the difference T1 and T2, uh, you presented that the in T2, the soft tissue is more intense. Is that correct, Professor? より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、より、
or uh, this way the damage. So we can uh, uh, we can do differential diagnosis by the uh, change of the signal intensity of the region. Uh, also, a uh, tumor. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we can uh, distinct uh, distinct odontogenic keratocyst from uh, unistic amelogrostoma. Uh, we can uh, find uh, the small uh, enhancement area uh, on uh, MRI. Uh, we can uh, distinct uh, both. So uh, case by case. Uh, I'll show you uh, next chance uh, the actual uh, cases uh, next time. <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Professor. Today, uh, I show the essential uh, images, uh, not uh, each uh, region. So uh, you can understand maybe uh, actual cases. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, there's some question for uh, from Fahri. Uh, the question I will read for you. Uh, uh, about the updates of the MRI for the people who have dental implants. Uh, this is the question for you, Professor, mm. from Fahri. Uh, uh, she, uh, she, she asks you about the update uh, of the MRI for the patient with dental implants. As we know, the past year, the all of dental implants is contraindication for using MRI. Uh, as well, the method we have uh, able to make the course. Uh, as now, some titanium dental implants now are safe for MRI imaging. Is that correct, Professor? What do you think about uh, about that, Professor? Uh, and about the metal artifact from MRI and the beginning slide presentation. And then, how can it be the metal artifact as the metal? of the contraindication of the MRI aging. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, metal uh, influence uh, image of MRI, um, but uh, yeah, uh, 1.5 Tesla uh, or 3 Tesla MRI uh, shows uh, don't don't uh, that doesn't so don't so many influence uh, MRI uh, arise heat 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 heat. Uh, but uh, on, only three Tesla uh, doesn't have heat, so uh, it, it is uh, uh, not a problem uh, taking MRI, but MRI uh, has uh, metal arch factor, uh, so uh, we can understand the images. Uh, but uh, implant, um, Titan implant uh, has uh, a huge uh, influence uh, on MRI. So, yeah, uh, metal uh, confirm uh, fix uh, fixation. If uh, metal uh, fixed well, uh, we, we can uh, take MRI safely. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, 
dari yang lain belum ada pertanyaannya. Uh, maybe the time is uh, time is up, Professor. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going. My English is, is so not good. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse yes. me, Dr. Lucy. Yeah. There is one more. Oh, more one more. Which one? Yeah. I, uh, I will highlight him. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gama and Dr. Lucy. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank. Uh, Professor Asaumi for this uh, wonderful session uh, with us. Uh, and I would like to uh, ask you one following uh, question, uh, a question following uh, Dr. Lucy's uh, question. Uh, so uh, I'm wondering what's the importance of uh, the, the diagnosis of uh, squamous cell carcinoma using this MRI and uh, if there is any uh, opportunity to to enhance the the uh, contrast uh, to distinguish bit to yeah to distinguish uh, the squamous cell carcinoma from the normal tissue uh, using some maybe nanoparticle or uh, if there is a specific uh, ligand receptor from the squamous cell carcinoma or the surrounding tissue uh what would that be uh thank you for uh, uh giving me chance to ask questions thank you ah nanotechnology do ya no ne <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I can uh, 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 answer, I, I can't answer the, uh, that question, <laughs> nanotechnology. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, no, no problem, uh, Professor, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Dr. Lucy and Professor. Uh, uh, what about the uh, second question? Uh, if there is any um, specific ligand receptor on the tissue of squamous cell carcinoma uh, that we can target to treat the uh, tumor or maybe to improve the diagnosis. Yeah, uh, thank you. Mm. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, pet, uh, pet is uh, can um, pet can uh, do that. No, not the MRI. Oh, okay. A pet pet positron uh, emission. All right. Uh, tomography uh, can uh, do uh, uh, your idea. All right. Uh, thanks for the. Uh, uh, Answer and explanation, uh, Professor. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we have also a uh, pet machine in New York University. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for Mr. Davy uh, for the question. Uh, thank you for the answer, Mr. Uh, Professor Asaumi. Uh, Dr. Gemma, waktunya masih ada atau bagaimana? Uh. Okay, if that's all, Professor Asomi and Dr. Lucy, uh, we will end this session. Okay. Uh, thank you for all the participants today. 
I would like to I would ah. like to thanks. Yeah. I would like to give thanks and very mm -hmm. the for your time and for your lecture today, Professor. Uh, we I'm, I'm sure that we all the participants learn a lot uh, from your lectures today. And I also want to thank Dr. Lucy for your time uh, as a moderator today. Uh, I hope we can meet again next time. Uh, and for the all participants. And for all the participants, uh, for the post test, the, the post test will be in the in this website. You mm -hmm. can all check the fkg.unpad.ac.id slash visiting lecture slash, and it, it will be here. The link will be here. The link will be here. So thank you all for your attention. Thank you all for the guests from Okayama University and also for the Pajajar University, all for the organizer and special thanks for Professor Junichi Asalmi. Uh, so we are at the end of this program. I will like thanks again very much for all your participation in this lecture. lecture. I hope you enjoy the program. Have a great evening. Thank you, Professor Asalmi. See you Thank next you. time, Professor. Uh, I will wait See you next time. I hope we next, can meet again. <laughs> next lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to uh, visit uh, your university next time uh, after uh, COVID-19. <laughs> okay. Of course, Professor. We're waiting here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. See you later. Uh, see you. Thank you, Prof. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, Professor. Bye bye. Uh, yeah.